Hey everybody, I was working on an instructional video, which I'm going to release hopefully tomorrow or the next day, um, on, on uh, another setting that I've been doing some testing on that I want to clear the air because I see a lot of confusion, which is uh, off time. So I don't want to talk about that now. What I want to talk about today, and the reason I interrupted making my other video, is Chidubox just came out with a, an update 1.7. I think two or three days ago, maybe it was longer than I missed a day or two, I don't know. Um, as people know, I'd reviewed their last update and it had a lot of great features, but then for me, it was crashing so much that I reverted back to 1.6.3 and that's what I'm still, that's what I've been using. So then they came out with this 1.7 and honestly, I wasn't that excited because given, I mean, I don't even care what function someone's adds to a program, if it crashes for me, you know, I'm happy with the 1.6.3, but it didn't have a lot of the new features. And because of that, I'd started experimenting with Lychee uh, Slicer, which is pretty good. Um, and I was actually preparing to make a video on Lychee Slicer. Then this 1.7 dropped from Chitterbox, and I figured, you know what? <sighs> the last one was so crashy, let me download this one check it out, see if it improves for me at all, because maybe it's my computer, maybe it's other programs I have that conflict, I don't know. Because some people had said they're using the old one and it wasn't crashing, so I don't know. Um, yeah, my wife's a computer expert and I asked her and she couldn't figure it out, so if she can't figure it out, you know, maybe, maybe it's just something that we don't know. Um, so I downloaded this 1.7 and I've now been using it for three or four days straight like, I don't want to exaggerate, probably eight hours a day, maybe more, and no crashes. In fact, this, this new version for me, and I, I hope it's like this for everyone else, crashing less even than the stable, the one I was using, the 1.6.3, which is very stable, still crashes on me occasionally. This one hasn't crashed at all under heavy use, and I'm dropping supports, moving them, editing, I'm doing everything that could stress or tax the program on my computer, I'm doing it. And so I don't want to waste too much time talking about this. I'm a little excited because now all of a sudden, all the good features that I liked when they updated last, I can finally use them. So, you, you know, you can drop a support on the model and drag it off and it becomes an independent standing support that's not touching the model. Um, when you hit a difficult to reach place, it now angles the support for you. Uh, for me, the biggest thing, and, and maybe uh, for all you guys too, if you're doing your own supports at all, is now, and I'm gonna show, I'm, we're going to go into the program and I'll show you how to do these things. Uh, if you drop one support onto the model, so let's say here's my tip and it's touching the model. If you click edit and then click on the tip of the support or the ball and you double click, you now have uh, basically a, a, a tip support multiplier. So once you double click anywhere you single click after that, it adds another support tip. So it creates an automatic tree. It just adds the tip going back to that same original ball. So if you have a, something like this hanging that you need to put say eight supports, now you add one, double click the tip and click, 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 double click it off and done. You've got eight or nine supports or whatever you need all in one tree without having to drag and actually make the tree. So this is like a huge time saver. By huge, it might be a couple minutes, but you multiply that by many models and you're saving a lot of time. Plus, you don't have to drag to create your tree anymore. If you want to create a tree, it's now instantaneous. It's really easy. You do it just a few times, you get the hang of it, it becomes automatic how to do it. And it is a great feature. So th this, this feature, huge. The other feature I'm gonna mention again, I mentioned in my old review, I don't expect you to go back and look at a review of an earlier update, what's the point? So I'll mention it here. The other one that was big for me, uh, first of all, when you click a support tip now, it becomes see-through. So when you go to aim that support tip at an island, now you can see exactly where it's going. So it just allows you to be more precise, which is great. Uh, they've got uh, another setting and in the settings itself, when you go to the program, again, I'll show you guys this. Uh, you can change an angle uh, of view so that when you rotate your camera to below the model, all the bottom parts of the supports disappear and you can only see the tips. 
So this makes it a lot easier to place supports once you already have a lot of supports down. It used to be difficult, now it's a lot easier. Um, the only little wonky thing about this, and again, I'll talk about more when we're in the program, if you, in that view where you can't see any bottoms, if you edit a tip and move it, sometimes it actually moves the bottom as well, which is a little strange. I actually think that's a glitch. Um, I have to remember to actually uh, tell the Chitterbox developers about that, so hopefully it's a glitch they can change. But in general, uh, this version of Chitterbox is like 100 times better. Now, Lychee Slicer, just, just to throw this in there because I am working on that also, um, has a function where you can see tips, middles, like it lets you select what you're going to see, which is even one step better. Maybe Chitterbox will implement that soon, I don't know. But I'm not doing a comparison right now, although maybe I'll do a video like that soon. But this new Chitterbox uh, version for me is fantastic. Like I said, the least crashing of any Chitterbox version I've ever used, so that's, that's like a joy already. But the ability to, uh, to, to clone support tips is great. This rotate and, and only see tips is good. Um, dragging a, a support off the model. The other thing you can finally do, which used to drive me crazy, now you can do it also, and this is another big one. Now, if you, in edit mode, and I use this for changing the supports that I get from other Patreons, actually. So let's say I, I see 10 supports on the model or 15 supports on the model that are, you know, Let's say they're too small. I see them, they're all 0.2, but I think they should be 0.3 or 0.4. So I click all those. I click one, hold control, click the rest. Now they're all selected. Now I can go and change the size. And again, I'm going to show you this in shooter box. Change the size of those all at once. Great. You can even select all the supports on my. Let's say you want to, my advice on how to scale down models. If you're going below, let's say even a pre support model I did, and you're going below, say, 85%. Uh, what I recommend is to thicken all the supports. Now you can batch select all the supports on the model, thicken them all by 0.1 millimeter, and boom, you've thickened all the supports a little bit. Now you can save it as an STL, re-import that STL, then scale it down, and your support should hold. So the new Chidu Box version has a lot of the stuff that it needed. Again, a lot of these functions were in the last update, but I couldn't use them because the thing, damn thing was crashing all the time. So now that it's not crashing, I'm actually getting to use these new functions. I'm loving it. Uh, you know, and, and again, I have to keep working with Lychee and maybe do my comparison video in the next couple of weeks on that. But for now, Cheetah Box to me is back to being king because all the things that were wrong with it are now fixed and they added a bunch of functions that, that I'd been waiting for, kind of. Like the, the support cloning Cloning the tip, for instance, that was a glitch in one of the old programs. And I think uh, William Tatum might have been the one. I don't know if he discovered it. He's the first person that told me about it. So I'm going to credit William Tatum. Uh, you know, he's a support monkey. I'm going to credit William Tatum with, with discovering that glitch. But Chitterbox saw that, heard about it, and then made it an actual function, which is great. So I'm really happy with this new uh, addition of Chitterbox. And now... I'm going to say something I didn't say in, any, in the last three or four updates they did. If you use Chitterbox, like I do, this update you should go and download. I, I do want people to report back to me in the comments if you're getting any crashing. Because like I said, this for me has been the most crash-free version of Chitterbox I've ever had. So I'm hoping it's like that for all of you guys too. And it's not like a weird thing where it's not crashing for me, but it crashes for other people. I'm hoping they fixed whatever the issues were in the software whatever conflicts were there that made it crash for people. Uh, this, is, this is absolutely the best version of Chitterbox I've ever used, like hands down, bar none. The added features are great, no crashing. So anyway, I'm gonna, for those people who wanna stick around, I'm gonna do a very short video where I just uh, teach you how to use, even though they're simple, it doesn't hurt, I'm gonna teach you how to use some of these new functions in this new latest version of Chitterbox. And that's it. So I hope you guys learned today, something today. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, please check out my other vids. I'll be back uh, with the video on, well, what was I making on that was important? I can't remember. Oh, off time, light off time for your prints. Uh, that'll be in a day or two. And that's it. So uh, stay tuned. Let's go into Chitterbox together and check this out. Thanks. So we're looking at a incredible sculpt of Wukong by Twin Goddess. Uh, this is actually part of my Kickstarter, so I'll have a link to where you can find it. But forgetting that, let's talk about new Chitterbox 1.7. So you find the spots you want to support, 
and we're going to talk about the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the support tree and what I told you guys about that is that you're going to click to add a support which I'm going to do now first of all all these little points show you suggested points for supports if you have the little eye icon on you see them if you don't you don't see them this is not a hundred percent island detection so it's just a guideline you know whether you like it or not it's up to you whether you use it or not it's up to you but it does hit a lot of points but definitely not all so it, it's definitely not a fail safe so i'm going to drop a light support here okay and you see as i rotate below 10 degrees which is my setting on the on the um make supports disappear as I angle the camera down, you see the bottom of the supports disappear and you can only see the tips, which is handy. So now I'm gonna edit this. I'm gonna keep it here. I'm gonna double click on it and then single left click, single left click, single left click. That's all you have to do. Then when you wanna get this off, as you'll see, it's got a phantom one. I just double left click quickly and boom, it's gone. So I've created a support tree and dropped four supports way faster than I could have dropped four supports and then dragged them together. Now let's say the other thing here, let's say I want to batch change it. So I select one, hold control, and then click the other ones. Now I'm going to raise the diameter on them so they're thicker. And then when you're done with that, you just click add support and it just gets you out of that mode and everything stays changed. And look how thick they all are now, all changed at once. So that's a great, great feature. You know, th th this is a real time saver. Like over on the cloak, I would do the same thing. I'd drop like, f you know, one thick support and five or six thin ones right in the same spot. Yeah, you know, you can edit them differently, separately afterwards. So I would do it on the ring here as well. So again, double click it, go to edit mode, double click, and then left click, left click. Now that's all I want. So I'm going to take, just drag somewhere else and double click now. And Boom. Now, let's say I want the middle one thicker only. I can just edit the middle one, just like you used to be able to. I don't have to batch select if I don't want to, obviously. So you see that that makes things a little easier. Now I want to show you how when you add a support, if it's close to an edge, instead of it used to drop it onto the model, now I told you it'll, it'll bend it around for you a little better. So like here, see how it bends to avoid the model? So that's pretty handy. Before I would have to drop a support and then angle the tip up to that spot. Now I can just drop it off that spot and it works. And same with this one. See how it bends? And it keeps enough distance from the model that it won't bond. Now if I drop one where there's no way to bend it off, I can then click on it and drag it off like this. And whoops, I dragged it a little too far. Now you see that it's too thin because my middle support settings is what are used for those pillars. was very thin. So then I just click on it and... Well, first I'll change the angle, then I'll click on it, and then I'll just go to the middle settings, and I'll change the diameters to something, you know, normal real quick. And then change the tip to something a little more normal. But now it's got a support into an area where it would have been really difficult for me to draw it in. This is just a faster way to do it. Drop it on the model and just drag it right off. So th those are basically most of the new functions I wanted to show you. The important thing was you saw during that demo, the damn thing didn't crash, which is great because on the older update the last update i wouldn't have been able to even do those few minutes without it crashing on me so anyway i'm going to do more in-depth video tutorial on this probably i just want to show you guys this new update and that hey it's not crashing hey it's got all these improvements and i do think people now should start using the updated chitterbox version so thanks and happy 3d printing everyone